Welcome to You Think I Stopped Working on the Crazy Report Thing? Hey, I'm Eric. And um, short answer is no, I didn't. I had a, a long flight where I got a chance to do some more work on it and a uh, couple of evenings and um, it's actually coming along. Uh, and a lot of you has been asking, so I thought I would do a follow-up video here and also um, show you what I have built so far. And uh, again, I've loved your comments. Uh, I'm working on figuring out uh, for a way for you guys to try it out. And uh, probably be in January at some point. Um, but one of the things that I was thinking out in the last thinking out loud in the last video was the uh, what is this is this what is this thing uh, and actually I'm not sure what it is yet but I'm sure that one of the things that I considered because that kind of made sense uh, was that well, is this part of the simple object designer and right now I don't think so because it's a very different workflow. It's a di very different approach where you you know change the comment, you see the result right away. Where a app design, well, you need to compile, you need to deploy the app, and then you can try it out. So it's a whole different inner loop. Um, and it might be part of that also at some point, but right now I think it's, it's, it's a thing by itself. Um, and too many of you guys, when you are asking me, well, what's happening uh, or whatever, uh, <laughs> you started calling it the simple report designer. So that kind of stuck in my head. So, so that is what it's been labeled right now. I don't know if that's the the end result, but you know, it kind of goes with the, I guess, with the uh, with the branding um but actually in, in enough talk right now let's uh, let's have a look and see how it looks right now so uh, here is the layout list and you can see i have doubled the amount of testing i have done since last time so i now have two reports um again this is layout uh so in reality what we have here is well let me see if I go into custom report layouts, they are also in here. So as soon as you create a uh, uh, a layout inside the simple report designer, then you also get a custom report layout. And you can see there is a type, so a simple layout. Um, so there, there's a lot of, in general, there's a lot of confusion about layout because we have custom report layouts, and then we have report layouts that are also kind of custom, uh, but but they are supplied differently, where custom report layouts are supplied from within the BC. Let's see if this will even show up. Uh, hey. Um, then report layouts are report layouts supplied by apps. Uh, or by you, because you can also, you know, add in a new layout and upload it here. But this one is, this this page is weird because you cannot, uh, you cannot update the the layout with the latest fields and so on. So it it's there's two things and they don't work the same. Anyway, I think that might be another video. Let me know in comments below if you want the the long explanation of report layouts. Um, so let's go back to this thing. So let's start with the, the invoice. Um, and actually, let's start by going to poster sales invoices. And let's print an invoice. We can see that we have chosen a repo layout. Um, I should not know where this lookup. This lookup probably goes in the other one, um, but we have chosen because you can do custom layout, custom report selection. What is it? Report layout selection. That's the one. 
and when this one finally wakes up maybe i should have done more stuff on this darker before i start this video um we can see that we have selected a custom layout here um so that goes and if i say preview working on it and i get a report um and lots of stuff is happening here uh so right now last in the last video you just saw it came up with a with a internal page and it showed the html so i have created a service uh an html to pdf service uh based on some .NET libraries that actually have a Chrome browser running inside them. So it is a Chrome browser that is rendering the output um, HTML to, to PDF. And that also means that I can inject fonts and stuff like that. Not that I have done that yet, but actually I tried. This one's supposed to be, be MRCR, MICR uh, encoded, but it's not. Um, but it's a PDF, so there's a service running. Uh, so the central sense of the, um, the HTML get a PDF back. So so it's working normally. So I can also you see I can go say print. Um, and we get printing just like we would expect. Uh, and the external service uses a th somewhere between 300 milliseconds per 300 to 350 milliseconds per page to render depending on on content so it, it's actually pretty fast right now I feel it I feel that's fast is that fast um, so it's kind of working um uh, that way so let's go back here to uh to the to the layout um i can now let's let's just look at what we have here uh so in the last video i kind of had something that i call a template and that was the style sheet and you know, say this report runs on this style sheet um and that was a neat idea but but in reality that broke uh, serialization. Uh, so I wanted to be able to serialize a single report and have that as a file, a layout file, um, and you know be able to export it, import it, and uh, not be dependent on anything else. So it should be self-contained. So I uh, I changed it so each report actually has its own style sheet. You can see here the style sheet is slightly longer than than the last time we saw it. Uh, the stuff at the top is an attempt to um, to neutralize um, default browser layout. So so the so when Chrome and whatever uh, when you renders nothing, you actually still get a bit of styling. Uh, so right now I was saying, well, let's try to get rid of uh, all that uh, stuff you get by default. So we started at zero. Um, whether it helps, I am actually unsure of right now. Um, so I still have the templates, but it's kind of like when you have a style sheet, you can say, okay, get a, get a template to start with. Uh, and I should probably have some sort of mapping on template seeing this is the default for new reports, something like that. Um, so that has changed. But let's uh, let's look at... Well, there's none on here. Maybe we maybe should add this. So edit initialization code. So if I look at this one, we can see that here's a piece of AL code. So now the the compiler from the toolbox, my AL compiler. So so this 
Repo thing is turning into a December project for me. And a uh, couple of years back, I created the, uh, the AL compiler uh, that is now part of the toolbox uh, and part of many other things uh, all over the place now. Um, but I incorporated that into Hero. So, so right now, this is like a piece of AL code that runs at the beginning of a report. And right now, this just declares a global variable called test. That is the only thing that's happening here. Um, so let's say edit repo and take a look at how it looks. So, so this looks more or less the same as, uh, as the last time. And then actually not, because the last time I totally cheated you guys, uh, especially on when it came to the height of elements. Uh, so now you can see that there is actually a unit of measure saying this is the this is the unit that we use to that we're working on this report. So as you can see, there's two different uh, an imperial version on the uh, the metric version here. Um, so you specify the unit of measure on the report, and then everything on the report is in that unit. Uh, so in this case, if we go back in here, we can see that all the different elements have a kind of weird height. Um, and that is because I have a new function here. So I can say edit element, edit layout. And now I kind of get all, uh, not kind of, get, I get all the, the elements here. Um, so I can see all the elements. On the left right now, I have a column, uh, and and this is crude layouting. So this might, this will probably look better at some point. The idea is that now we can go here and say, okay, this one needs to be this tall, and you can see there's a grid. So the grid is is, is right now one centimeter by one centimeter. Um, so so you can you can go oh okay I don't need that much footer here or the, uh, the 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 total section needs to be more or whatever, and and sometimes we can see it gets screwed up anyway. But but that's a work in progress. But whenever the idea is still that whenever you you change something and then you say test print in preview and it shows you up shows up really quick in uh, in HTML viewing. Um, so we can see, oh, apparently our header is getting into uh, uh, into the next section. So we have something that is overflowing here. And what is overflowing is actually this element up here. So if I click on any element here, so I just I click, then we open that element up for editing. And another thing, I just to try it out. So now the editor that I'm using is, I, before I used one called CK editor. Uh, now I, I'm, I'm just trying out the one called Tiny MCE. Um, but here you see this element. And if I go and say, uh, I say view source code, for instance, we can see that image source data and then it says PNG semicolon base 64 comma and then add company picture. So add company picture is is a field in, in, in the data set of repo. This is the base 64 of the logo from um, from the uh, from, from company information. So in reality, when I, I just go to this print here directly. So that turns into Kronos. So right now, what, what's happening here is that this element doesn't really figure out that, that this one is way bigger because I haven't specified a height on it. So I need to, to make sure that my, my, my header section is, is tall enough so it looks nice. But again, this kind of illustrates what I want to do, that, hey, is this going to be... Oh, maybe I don't need, and, and I'll get this number to update nice while I dra I'm dragging also. Maybe it needs to be, you know, 49,77. I go in previous, you know, that's what I want. Um, so that that is kind of the, 
some of the layout things. Uh, still, we can go in here, and and this was you know, you know, go here and then say add field to layout. I get all the fields that I have in in my layout, and with example values of what's actually in the right now. And we can see a company picture has base sixty four in it. Um, so yeah, I can just add another. Uh, let's say I want the Swift code here for some reason. I go to this print right away. I don't know if there is a Swift code. There isn't. Um, so super, super easy, super, super, super fast. Um, but remember, we I created a global variable. Um, so each of these elements, let's go back to, to this thing. Each of these elements also have code now. And in this case on the, on the header, I said test equal high, which the Danish word for, for high. Hi YouTube. Let's do that. Hi YouTube. Save, exit out. And then we can see that if I go to the, uh, the footer and we look at the element we can see that it says oh hang on undo let's see if I go add add test add add so and again I don't know if this is gonna be the syntax um, but between the two pairs of add signs that is AL code meaning that Let's uh, let's run this again, and now it says "Hi YouTube" here. So so we got full scripting, um, full scripting across elements. So if you wanna, like, for some reason you need to have a running total, or you need to add an extra calculation, or stuff like that, you can just do that. Um, you can write any code that the toolbox compiler understands. So that's a subset of AL, but it's a useful subset of AL. Um, the same thing is if I go to, um, let me go to, doo -doo 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 -doo, let me go to the header again here and edit the element. You can see that we have another add add here. Oh, go away. So add a doc page number. So there's uh, right now there's actually three. Uh, let, me, let me find the code if I can. Uh, where did that go? Here, there we go. Let's make that. Uh, <laughs> uh, page number. There we go. So here, here is is something. This is slightly unrelated, but this is so the the toolbox compiler has a on get env environment on get environment var variable, meaning that whenever you write something a name and that is clearly not a name that the the toolbox knows or the, the compiler knows or the interpreter in this case knows then it has an event and in this case it's the on get environment variable um, so we end up here in, in this case and say okay we know page number and we have a global variable inside the, the repo engine that's page number uh, doc page number so page number is one two three if you print 10 pages, you get 10 pages. If you're, print, you're printing four invoices with each two pages, then doc page number will be one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So it resets per document. Um, and uh, company name also, so you know, that's classic nav repo thing that upper right corner has, has the, the, the company name printed. Um, so, that's uh, that's how this is integrated. What, the, what I actually jumped over was that 
uh, I have also added all the variables, uh, all the data that's in the uh, the data set of the report will also is also global variables in uh, in the AL. So you can actually use everything that's that's there uh, as as code. Um, one thing I was playing with, and this, uh, I think you saw something here. It says I, I was starting to play with this. Should might this might need to be core report dot skip uh, ish, uh, but why not just call it skip? Um, so you can you can in 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 logic decide whether to print something or not print something. So even though the data is in the uh, in the data set, you might not want to print it anyway. Um, so you can do that. Um, yeah. So right now the end, so let, let's the other report, which is in in inches, simpler repo right now. It's just the it takes the the customer list uh, report and um, head of header. So right now, normal is the the main data body. I don't know. Maybe normal is not the right word for it. Um, But a, a a super simple layout. We want to print some some customer lists, so we can customers on a list. We do that. We have page number one and uh, company name down here because we did the thing that we now know how to do. Um, so. It is coming along. Uh, the reason the those the reason those two reports are interesting compared to each other is that this one, the customer list, when you you know we have the root element multiple times on the same page. Where the report because we have assigned that something in the root element has the page break element uh, checkbox. Actually, I could do it on probably, uh, I think this checkbox right now just have to exist on any element in the uh, in, in the, in the root uh, data item. But then this is per per page. So, so we create a new page for each element. So there's slight different in, in, in the internal processing between those two reports uh, because of that logic. Um, I guess the next thing I need to do is, is try out the check report uh, because that's one of the, the, the fun ones. Um, but I, I, I still need your, your comments. Is this still a math project is does this as and so I'm not a designer I never claim to be so so my reports are they're looking like I can make them look and and uh, at some point I need I need brilliant people who uh, who can who can put a, a graphical eye on, on something to to make it look nice uh, but but so far so so and this is if I could poke hole in this and say it's not gonna work this is this is lunatic this is this is this is not a good idea this will never work uh, then you know I can put it to rest um, so far, I haven't been able to dismiss this. Uh, I find myself thinking about it and saying, "Oh, I can do this. I can do that." And uh, and now that I got the service running uh, that will do the uh, the conversion, so it actually works really, and not just fake report layout as I showed in the first video. Um, 
it could actually be used right now. And uh, some of the internal reorganization with the with the style sheets and so on also uh, also makes it easier to work with. I, for a long time, actually, bonus content because we are passing a lot of time here. Uh, bonus content for a long time, I think I thought this is going to be one of those apps without a setup because uh, that that's uh, I I I really would love I have a few apps that has no setup and I think it's the most wonderful thing. Uh, from from an you know from an app perspective that just do the thing it needs to do and there's no setup there's nothing you just you, you run the app and, and everything's there uh, so for I thought huh this could be a no setup kind of app which would be really really cool and then at some point I realized I need some setup and and one of the reasons I need some setup is um, you can see here. Here's actually another style sheet, and uh, and this style sheet is some of this is right now internal, uh, but but at least this part is you know this is what creates those squares. So remember when you when I was uh, I said edit report edit layout I I see the nice grid here. Um, that's that's just a style sheet, and the style sheet is is basically these six lines saying that we background size one by one background image is a uh, has a, a line on on each sides of uh, uh, of the square, uh, well to the right and to the bottom, and um, so you should. If I want, let's say that for some reason, no, I needed inch instead. For, because I was that kind of person. So I would go in here, edit report, edit layout. And now I got inch uh, squares. Or let me actually change that back before I suddenly forget that I showed you guys this. And uh, um, or maybe you want dots instead, or they need to be red instead of light gray. Or so, so I don't want to hide this away and hard code it somewhere. I actually want to uh, have it here. The other setup that I really needed was um, whether you, when you click test print, you just get the quick boom. Uh, it shows the H uh, render the HTML on the page, uh, or you want to go through and actually get it to convert to PDF and all that um, because that will take a few seconds more um, so and there may be other things so so this clearly not the app where I would go no setup but it is a dream and and I think it's cool whenever you, you can hit that anyway what you can do right now is you know use the comments below and let me have it uh, uh, shoot me down uh, or if you like it, <laughs> let me know about that also. Uh, and uh, I will continue uh, sanitizing, make sure that it works in more than two reports right now. Uh, I will harden the, uh, the external service enough so we can figure out some way for you guys to try it out if you want. Um, so, so right now, you know, comments below, hit me up on Twitter, whatever you prefer to communicate with me. Uh, let me know what you feel about this. Um, and, uh, I guess there will probably be a, a third video in this series at some point. Uh, that'll be after, after Christmas, after the holidays, um, because I want to go skiing. Um, not necessarily create reports all the time. Anyway, you know the drill. Here is another video about some ale hacking. If you haven't seen that one, go check it out. It's, it's selected just for you. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.